Good morning. Welcome to Montana Baptist Church. We have not so much going on this week in the way of announcements. We just have it listed about Pastor Jim Ritter is still our pastor while um, Pastor Ron and Jamie are still on their travels. The good news is, is they're on the home stretch on their way home with an ETA of hopefully on Friday if all goes well. Looking ahead, we have, we're still doing our collection of bottled water and Gatorade. I see we do have some out front here. I'm hoping that, you know, we can, can collect a little bit more before we get it delivered to our fire companies. Um, Tuesday, August 9th at 6.30, we are going to Country Comfort for music. And then on the 15th, we will be going back to Country Comfort for a scrapbooking page. The 21st is when our news articles are going to be due for our September, October. Can you imagine that it's time for September and October's newsletter already? It just seems like the summer has flown by. But do you want to make sure to give you any information to Mary Sue? And then on the 22nd, we will be having a leadership meeting here at the church at 6.30. And we still have wise gift cards available. All you just need to talk to Vaughn, Mary Sue, or Mary Funk about getting one of those. Do we have any other announcements that we like to add? Susan. Yes. Um, I think everyone's aware that we're going to be having some concrete work done, uh, pad and ramp out back, um, replacing the mishmash sidewalk around the side, and a concrete parking pad, and there's something about this. Um, downspout out here. That is supposed to start on August 15th, the oh. Monday. Okay. So, you know, his goal is to have everything back in order by the following Sunday, so just keep your eyes out and one, one or more of the doors might not be accessible or something. So, if all goes well, that should start that day, whatever permitting, and, you know, his goal is to have it done by the following Sunday. So, just okay. keep an eye out for that. Awesome. That sounds like a wonderful, be just in time for our 150 plus 2 anniversary that we'll have nice smooth sidewalks because that is only about a month away. That's going to be, that's a nice lead in there, I think, to remind you guys that we want to start telling people, if you haven't already started telling people, we want people to know that we are having an anniversary celebration, a two-day event. And speaking of that, those of us that are in leadership, if I could speak with you for like no more than five minutes after service, I have a couple questions regarding the 150 plus two that I need to have you guys on board so that I know my direction. All right, do we have any other announcements? No? Okay, I have just one more. I'm like full of information today for some reason. I just wanted to also announce that starting the, I believe it's the 18th of September, we will be having a children's Sunday school again. That I will be heading it up, and I have a volunteer of Beth as my co-teacher. So we are super excited. I haven't had a chance to talk with Beth yet to see what her ideas are, but I know she's spoken to Jamie and said that she would be willing to help co-teach. So I'm like looking forward to that, that we will have something for the kids here again in the mornings. All right. So if that's all the announcements, I think we will go into our responsive reading. All right. From his fullness have we all received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But God, who was rich in mercy, out of the great love for which he loved us, even when we are dead through our trespasses, made us alive again with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And grace raised us with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in the church of Jesus. That in the coming ages, he 
life show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift from God. Not because it works. Least of anyone should boast. The grace of God has appeared for the salvation of all men, training us to renounce irreligion and world passions, and to live sober, upright, and godly lives in this world. When the goodness and the loving kindness of our God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of, of deeds done by us in righteousness, but in virtue of his own mercy, by washing a re regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit, which he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in the hope of eternal life.
our doxology. For Christ, in God's presence, appears for his own, 
and makes intercession as he sits on God's throne. And sealed by the Spirit who abides all the way, the believer is waiting for that glorious day when the blessed Lord shall in glory appear. The day of redemption, we wonder how near, then all that is mortal no longer shall be. In glorified bodies, our Lord we shall see. What a day that will be when that day comes. Alrighty. Please join us in singing. You guys can stay seated, though. Um, hymn number 102. I'm not sure this one's in here. <laughs> not on how to drop that one. Drop to kill. <gasps>
absolutely. You guys will please stand while she says the word of God. First Corinthians 15 and number 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not uh, I, but grace of God was with me. May the Lord add his blessing. Thank you, Joyce. So, what do you think about when you hear the phrase, God's grace? Do you think of God's forgiveness of all of our sins? Or do you think of God's grace as it, refer how, as it refers to how he deals with us humans? Or perhaps you think of the song, Amazing Grace. Or maybe you think of it as a gift, the most important gift you will ever receive. If you know Jesus personally, that grace is promised to you as we stand before God to receive his love and mercy. We don't deserve his grace. Not one single person on this earth deserves his grace. We're not entitled to it just because we call ourselves Christians. But, and nothing we can do, nothing will ever change that fact. But yet God still gives us our grace. He gives it to us as a free gift. And all we have to do, there's a catch. There's always a catch to something, right? But this is a good catch, is we have to accept it. To joyfully accept his gift. And you are, you have the most precious gift you will ever, ever have in your life. When we think of God's grace, most of the time we think of it as a salvation. And absolutely, that's a huge factor of his grace, is our salvation, our guaranteed salvation once we have accepted Jesus into our hearts. Absolutely. And he shows us mercy, even if we don't deserve it, and we don't. Most of us, all of us, don't deserve it. But God does, he says in Ezekiel 18.23, Do I take pleasure in the death of the wicked? declares the Lord. Rather, I am not pleased. Rather, am I not pleased when they turn away from their ways and live the way he wants us to live? He is patient with us. He gives us many opportunities to change our minds and to follow him and to accept his grace. And once we've accepted that grace, we become a member of his family. What a joyous family to be a part of. joyous part. In John 14, 16, it tells us that Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And once we are accepted Jesus into the heart, into our hearts, then we are allowed to be closer to God. And that is part of God's grace too, is to be allowed to be closer to God. To be able to talk with him, to go to him with any problem you have, no matter how small or how big it may be. And that he will listen to it all and he will guide us to follow what he wants us to do. We think of freedom as doing what we please. You know, a lot of us, we like our freedoms. Maybe we don't think we need rules. Maybe we think the rules are there to be broken. Some of us do think that way. But however, this kind of freedom will enslave us to sin. Those kind of freedoms, that is to break in the walls, are not good. They are not following the ways that God wants us to be. He wants us to be safe, and rules, whether we like them or not, are part of the reasons to have us to be safe. Romans 6.14 states that for no sin shall longer be your master, because you are not under law, you are under grace. 
And that is where we want to be, is under grace, under God's protection of his grace. One of the things when I was researching this, one of the best things I, I never thought about until I was researching this, is God's grace is new every single day. So if you messed up yesterday, it's okay. Today's a brand new day. You have a clean slate with God, and you can start all over again. And I never really thought of it that way. But I know when I worked in the school system, I used to work as a paraprofessional in an emotional support classroom. I always, that was my view for the kids. No matter what the kids did, whether they threw desks, whether they cussed like a sailor, and some of them knew a lot of cuss words and were freely willing to say them, or if they even hurt myself or my teacher, the next day was a brand new day, the slate was clean, and we started all over again. Now, you had to do that in that kind of situation, and God views us that same way. That every single day is a brand new day because I know sometime today I'll make a mistake. Something will happen. I made the wrong choice. But God will forgive me and He will guide me as to what would be the way. And He'll do the same for all of you as well. That all you have to do is go to Him and ask Him for guidance. And another good part of God's grace, which I'm sure we all know, is it's for all of us. Every single human on this planet, God wants to reach. He wants us all to have his grace. He's not stingy with it. He doesn't want it just for the select few, you know, only for those that are good enough to receive it. Because, as I said, there is nobody that's good enough to receive his grace. He will give it to every single one that will accept Jesus into the heart, into their heart. It will be their free gift of his grace. Now, while we're under his grace, we still have to work. It's not like a free ride. We need to work at being closer to God by reading the Bible, supporting our church members, supporting the church. And I don't mean just in money. I mean like doing BBS or doing music or Sunday school lessons, anything like that. That's all helping, strengthening our salvation, our grace under God. All of that is important. And that will help us to maintain, but also to become stronger because we want to mature as Christians. We just don't want to stay in the infancy part of it, saying that I am a believer, but then you don't learn anymore after that point. You want to keep learning. And then we've got to remember to do God's grace Daily, not just on Sundays. And I know life's busy. I get it. Trust me, I get it. We all have jobs. Some of us have more than one job. We have kids, grandkids, you know, whatever's going on. But we need to take even those couple minutes in the morning to to reach out to God and talk to Him and be on the same page as He's on, because we need to trust. Him. We need to turn to Him with our problems and our situations so that we are following what God wants us to do. We spend a lot of time talking about things in our lives. You know, sometimes we talk about our favorite football team or maybe baseball. I'm not sure if you guys like football or baseball. Or we will spend lots of time talking about our favorite TV show. I'm guilty of that too. I mean, I have a couple of shows that I like to watch and you know, I like to share, oh, did you see what happened here or there or whatever? Or maybe you're a movie buff and you're like, did you watch the latest movie or whatever? And then there are some people that like, oh, look how awesome my yard looks. It is still green. And that's kind of hard to say right now. I mean, that is really hard to say. But there are still some green out there. But a good topic for right now is, did you see how high the gas prices were? Oh, my goodness, how much higher can they go? kind of thing. I mean, we're always talking about that. Me working at Wise, I hear they're out of crackers. How can you be out of crackers? Like there was one point there was hardly any crackers on our shelf. How can you be out of crackers? I don't know. I don't manufacture the that. And then I also wonder about the cat food. The cat food bag was empty a good bit of the time. Dog food, fine and dandy. Cat food, not so much. And I'm like, what happened to the poor kitties there. I, 
I don't know. But that was a hot topic of conversation for the longest time. So where's the cat food? The another fun thing, and I know I'm guilty of this too, is the silly things that our pets do. Our kitty, uh, we have kitties in our house, and they do some crazy things. And then you see funny videos of that if you go search the internet sometimes of things like that. But just imagine if you would turn some of that energy that we talk about those trivia things, because they are kind of trivia in the scheme of things. But what happens if we would wake up each morning and thank God for his salvation? Thank God for his grace of waking up that morning. Or while praying at each meal to thank God for his graces. Not just for the food before us, but to thank him for the graces that he has given us. Or if we took five minutes to remind ourselves that without Jesus, we'd be lost. We would we'd be dead. I mean, in truth, we'd be dead. Maybe not physically right this moment, but we would be dead. And if you took time out to share God's grace with one person every day, can you imagine the spread of his word then? And if we took time to try to follow what God wants us to do, and I know sometimes that is hard because I don't know if it's God whispering on my shoulder or if it's the devil sometimes whispering in your shoulders. So you've got to figure out which who's doing the talking and try to lead the the right way. One thing I've learned is that if they're encouraging you and keeping you uh, upbeat and not putting you down, then you know that's God's path, not the devil saying, oh, can't do that, don't even try. So you don't want to listen to that voice. But every day if we did that, can you imagine the difference in our lives? I, I think that would be an interesting challenge. For us to do sometime. And I, I'm guilty, as I said, I'm guilty of some of those trivial conversations as, as well as my, my next door neighbor kind of thing. Kind of thing. So maybe sometime we'll have to challenge ourselves to see if we can do that for a week and just see how, and come back the following Sunday and see how that changed our lives. And while you're sharing your abilities, every single ability that we have, whether it's the ability to read, the ability to sing, the ability to play the organ all comes from God. Every single one of them. We don't always stop and think about that, but every single one of those abilities come from God. I think my ability to feel comfortable standing here comes from God. Well, I know, not think, I know it comes from God because I'm not, I never thought of myself as a public speaker before, but I'm, I'm doing, I think, okay standing up here before you guys on occasion. But, Using our abilities, we need to be using them to reach other members of the church or, and other members of our community to grow our church because that is part of our grace is we want everybody to have our grace, the grace that God gives, but they're not going to know it if we don't tell them about it. I mean, they're, if they're up in their homes and not listening, they're never going to know about the grace. And that's part of what we're commissioned to do, is to share. And I think with our abilities, and I think during Vacation Bible School, I think we did, you know, we shared it with those 15 little munchkins that were here. Now, they weren't all here the same night, but still, we were reaching out to them. And some of them, some of them knew about Jesus. I mean, they were able to give us really good answers when we were asking questions, and that is awesome. But then there are others that don't know about them, and we need to reach out to them. You know, there are many worldly problems out there that causes us to forget to take the time to seek God. And they, I mean, they are what they are. I mean, they are there. They're not going to go away just because we say, hey, stop with the rising gas or make sure there's cat food on the shelf. Just us saying that isn't going to do it. So we need to put into perspective that those are minor situations compared to sharing God's grace with others and so that we can continue to grow our family and to grow our church. And while in, in worldly ways will catch us and we get angry or frustrated and we will say things that are not godly and we will have a friend maybe say one of those square words that those kids in school know so well or we will be like I don't want to work with that person. That person's always ratchet, or that person's, 
you know, always complains about whatever in their life kind of thing. But sometimes you've got to put that aside and just try to focus on God. That, you know, God has you there for a reason. You might not know that reason. And a lot of times I don't know the reason why. But I know I had a coworker not too long ago that said to me when I was at Wise, I was the Wise coworker, not the church coworker, <laughs> said that um, he's like, you're always upbeat. You are never complaining about things. And I didn't tell him, but I'm like, why complain at Wise? I mean, Wise is Wise. They do whatever they want to do. You know, my little voice isn't going to change a whole lot. So I, I do what they talk. I try to do what they ask me to do. I try to follow their policies. And I listen to my coworkers. My coworkers, a lot of them like to vent. And I get that. You need to have somebody to vent to. But I try not to pick up their negativity and their complaining attitudes and just try to encourage them to not be so negative if I can. But more or less, I'm more of a sounding board for them. And I'm okay with that. Because we all need to have that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the foundation of our of our grace is Jesus. He is the one and only that you got to believe and accept into your hearts for him to change your way of thinking, your way of doing things. And you just you need to when you Accept Jesus into your heart, and you've got to remember that God is giving you that free gift. There are really no strings attached other than accepting Jesus into your heart. And just joyfully accept it. It is the most precious gift you will ever receive. Ever. I promise you, it's better than a new coffee pot. Kind of thing. I mean, I know we get excited if we see like a new coffee pot coming along, but this is much better than that. Romans 11, 6 says, but if it's by grace, it is no longer the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. Grace means undeserved favor. We could never provide ourselves with the forgiveness of our sins. Never. There is nothing that we can do that will ever wash away our sins. Nor could we ever provide ourselves with eternal life. I mean, as much as we might like to think we're immortal on our own, we're not. We're not any kind of superhero or anything like that with any special abilities. We need Jesus. We need God's grace. And all you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your hearts. And he will absolutely come reside there. And you will have accepted the most precious gift ever. You, just, you need to just strive to be faithful and try to be obedient to what God is leading you. You know, you don't want to hustle the world to, to creep in and push God aside. Because that can be easily done. You know, before you know it, it's next Sunday and we haven't even thought about God. And that saddens him when we just visit on Sundays. Absolutely. I'm going to close with Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. It says, For grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. Not as, as a result of works, so that no one can boast. All of our good behavior and efforts will never be enough to stand before God. Never. Never, ever. You just you want to do it. Ask Jesus to come into your heart and accept God's free gift, the most precious gift you will ever receive. Alrighty, and our closing hymn is going to be Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. And I think Miss Mary has it on video for us today. Well, I have it. Or it has the music. I have, yes. So give me one second to do this part and I'll do it.
each and every one of you was will have a blessed week and have God in your life. And I hope that each and every one of you does already have God's precious gift. And that I bless you if you are traveling or have appointments or anything to speak, that I ask God to be on you. And I bless you until we meet again next week. Or as Pastor Ron likes to say, or we meet in the air. Amen. And have a blessed day.